Okay. Thank God I got to leave early so we could go see this movie. Yeah. Oh, I'm so excited to see this movie. You know, being a Ben Affleck fan, I'm pretty excited to see it too. Um, I haven't seen a lot of his newer stuff. I'm still yet to see Argo. But really? Um, yeah. Oh my God, it's a good movie. I thoroughly, in, like, I, I enjoy a lot of his older stuff, you know? And I really enjoyed Gone Girl. That was... Gone Girl was good. That was a, that was a great film by him. A lot, of, a lot of people trashed his, how he did in that movie, saying it seemed like he didn't care, but I thought it was still a good movie for what it was. See, that's interesting. You, you like his older stuff. Most people don't. <laughs> I loved him in Armageddon, okay? Like, even in the movies that I think are just terrible, like Pearl Harbor, I think he's the best part of it. Because no matter what, I can expect a good performance from him. But he's really started to show that he's not messing around anymore, you know, with mm -hmm. his fucking Batman. And, you know, I think he's a phenomenal director, and I can't wait to see what he brings to the table in this movie. I'm looking forward to it, you know? I mean, I've never seen him turn in a bad performance. Yeah. Now, I've avoided some of the stuff that got trashed, so I can't really speak for that. But from what I've seen him in, he's always turned in a good, solid performance, and I expect more of the same. Um, and this is the type of role that he's suited for. The only thing I'm actually worried about with this movie, it's made, like, the director, you know what else he did? What? He did a movie this year called Jane Got a Gun with Natalie Portman, and it was so shitty. I've never heard of that. Like, it's it's not watchable. But I don't know if that was his fault, or if it was just, you know, a movie destined to fail. So, I'm worried that this movie might suck, <laughs> like Jane Got a Gun did, but I mean, I could be totally wrong. I'm actually going in carefully optimistic. I love Ben Affleck. I fucking love J.K. Simmons, are you kidding me? I think he's like one of the best actors of now, today. Now, Shay is Shailene Woodley in this one as well? I'm Shailene kind of, Woodley? I, I think don't, she, I have no idea. I don't think she is. I'm I'm trying I'm to, sure. I know there's a female lead in this. I'm trying to remember who it is. I'm going to pull it off. Anna Kendrick. That's right. Fan of her, too. Man, I mean, but I could... I know, can't say it's Shailene Woodley. She, <laughs> she actually turned in a very good performance in Snowden. I was, I was thoroughly impressed with her in Snowden. It's a shame she got arrested. Oh, shit. John Bernthal's in this, too. Yeah, John Bernthal's going to play a villain in this movie, and... If Jeffrey any, Tambor, big fan of him. I mean, if he's anything like my Punisher, oh my god, he's gonna be great. I fucking love John Berthold. All right, we're doing this, you know, pre-intro on the go because, you know, we won't have time to really yeah. sit in the parking lot to talk about He this got movie. out early, but I got out a couple minutes late. So, I mean, it's unfortunate, um, but we shouldn't have a problem. got out of the movie theater fucking loved it you did yeah i it's very entertaining like very very entertaining i think it might be one of the better films to come out this year it might be i mean time will tell if it makes my top 10 but as far as the movie goes yeah it's pretty solid <laughs> it, was, it was a great film it was the cinematography, the acting, the, I mean, the, the lighting, the mood, everything. And it's, it, it was dark when it needed to be, but it, 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 it knew when to let up too. Yeah. I mean, there is a lot to talk about, but I do want to keep this as spoiler free as I can. So some of the plot stuff we won't really discuss. But in terms of the movie, I mean, I thought it was pretty good. I think this was Ben Affleck's best performance this year. Um, I thought it was better than Batman vs. Superman. I really did. Well, maybe the movie, yes. But I don't know. He's just icy Bruce Wayne as Ben Affleck, you know? He's I, just that synced into the role. But it, it, you didn't even feel like it was the same character. Like, you... you you see Ben Affleck in Batman vs. Superman, and it's an entirely different person from this movie, you know? Well, I mean, yeah. I mean, Ben Affleck in this movie, 
Uh, he plays someone going, like, or struggling with, like, mental... Um, with autism. Yeah, with autism. Thank you. And, you know, a lot of the enjoyable parts of this movie come from his autism. Because the way it works for him, he has to complete a task. Like, he just psychologically has to complete a task that he's given in front of him. And he just, he can't handle not finishing anything. But the humor never makes light of the fact that he, like, it, it never pokes fun at autism. It's yeah. it's very dry humor throughout the movie. Yeah, like, a lot of the humor is, like, is based off of his awkward, like, social yeah, issues. Body language and his short responses to everything. Like, there was a great exchange between him and Anna Kendrick about, ooh, probably about, about what? 30, 45 minutes into the film. Maybe it's something like that, but I know exactly what he's talking about. They're like, she wants to like, you know, associate with him and he's just not having any of it. Cause he just, he can't socialize with people and she's trying to talk to him and he's very, very, very specific and like detail. And he always demands clarification and you can just tell he just doesn't want to be a part of it. And it's great. Well, and there were, there were some, there are some actually very interesting plot twists. Some of them I, I predicted early on, but then I was like, nah, that's too easy. There's one particularly at the end, and it's not the one you're thinking of if uh, if you've already seen the movie, but I won't spoil it. Um, yeah, that was, that was, uh, that, that gave me a little, uh, I enjoyed that. Yeah, it, it, I was really happy to see that, and I was kind of hoping that's how it would turn out. I mean, for those of you who haven't seen it, you have no idea, just go watch the movie. I mean... Really, like, it's definitely worth you checking out, for sure. I think that Ben Affleck's portrayal of someone dealing with autism... Like, I feel like this could be a movie that could earn him an award. I yeah, feel like, like this is an award-worthy movie. Like, his performance in this movie is great. It's nothing, like, you know, incredible. Like, I mean, his character, there's nothing about him... You know that exemplifies you know a big performance he's very toned down but but that's what he needed to be yeah he does a really good job with what he needs to be in terms of his autistic character um and the whole crime and you know conspiracy element of this movie is just fucking incredible man like i fucking love that mm -hmm. and it, it the this movie i i always whenever we do a review together i always talk about knowing your audience like do you want this to be a kids movie do you want this to be a general enjoyment film do you want this to be a film that could potentially push for awards and i think they were going for an award-winning film here and i think they might they they probably nailed it yeah it's not a perfect movie though and he'll probably disagree with me on some of the things i'm going to talk about but we'll I see want, i want you to talk about a lot of the things you enjoyed in this movie uh, like I said, I think this is one of Ben Affleck's best performances this year. Um, I, I I think that his ability to portray a character with autism, like, the, it was unreal. Because I've known people that have dealt with this, and it was in a lot of ways spot on. You know, John Bernthal, fantastic. Um, J.K. Simmons, fantastic. I'm blanking on her name, but she's the same actress that played Amanda Waller in Arrow fantastic job in this film i mean there was there were so many things that this film did right and it's it, it's a thinking man's film it's a film you're gonna have to see again to fully grasp everything mm -hmm. particularly it's, because like the beginning you know isn't really resolved until like much later in the film you know the the very beginning of the film you know introduces this idea or like you know this concept you know and it's a very subtle scene but then it's fully expanded upon like near the end of the movie and it's it's a fucking incredible scene. Yeah, and I'm looking over, trying to remember again who played everyone, and it's just... <sighs> they did a great job casting this movie. Um, no... No character is wasted in this film. Okay. I... I well, no, no... Even relatively major character is wasted. Ooh. I guess I need to know what you mean by wasted. I, I feel like every single character that actually had a name, you know, you know, like, cause like, I think all of those played a purpose. Mm -hmm. First, I want to talk about everything that I loved about this movie. Obviously the performances across the board are incredible. You know, everyone just does a 
damn good job here. Even Anna Kendrick. You know, I don't really, you know, like her that much. Um, she's kind of typecasted, and she is in this movie, but she provides a lot of humorous scenarios with him. And I'm glad to see that, like, she wasn't really a love interest for him. He was, she was just someone that, hey, I'm able to socialize with this person. I want to protect this person. Um, and there's even a scene, like, where she tries to get romantic with him, and he's like, ooh, and he gets distracted and, you know, walks <laughs> off. I liked that. You know, yeah, I don't like... Well, and I think that... While she has been typecast in the past, I think this could be the role that puts her into contention for bigger roles if that's what she wants. Yeah, I mean, she could definitely pull off a bigger role, you know, whatever. But, you know, in this movie, she's not, you know, someone that Ben Affleck falls in love with. Because it, it could be so easy to do that, but I'm really glad that the movie was clever enough not well, to. Well, and it, it, it led towards that toward, for a little while. And then it veered away from it, and I was like, good. Good. Yeah. This isn't a movie that needs a love interest. Yeah, because... I mean, I mean it, there, there he, ended up being more or less a love interest later on, but not the same type of love. I feel like she's attracted to him, and he's just not really... <laughs> he's just her. not having it. Yeah, and that's great. Um, J.K. Simmons, you know, he did a good job with his role. Um, Most of his role... You know, you really, you really see his role at, like not quite the midway but like around the two-thirds mark of the film like right at the, the, the ending of the second act of the film yeah. is where you really like learn about his character. yeah exactly and you learn what his role is and why he's got such an interest in the accountant yeah um for a while though his character was so minimal like it i was watching it and i thought hey no i want to see more of jk simmons you know you know, he's doing a great job. You know, don't don't shy away from J.K. Simmons. I'm glad that they, you know, brought him back later in the movie. It's just there are scenes that he could have been and sprinkled throughout that he just wasn't in. And that was a little disappointing, but that's not one of the negatives I have. It kind of segues into it, but I want to continue talking about the great things in this movie. Ben Affleck kicks ass in this movie, but the action's never, like, over the top. I mean, it's very, very realistic action. No, it's it, the uh, the trailers definitely made it seem more action-packed than it was. And while there was action where it needed to be, they didn't overdo the action. They they didn't sacrifice story for action. They they managed to balance it perfectly. Yeah, which made every time Ben Affleck shot someone much more effective. And I mean, if you had a problem with him killing in Batman versus Superman, <laughs> I mean, you haven't seen the shit oh, he boy. can do with this. Oh, boy. Oh, you're in for a surprise. Like, oh, my God. I'm like, even when he's killing people, you're having a good time because there's, like, a moment... There's moments where, like, you know, it's kind of funny how he kills someone, and it's just great to see. I love seeing Ben Affleck kick ass. Um... I want to hear your thoughts first. What did? Are, is there anything more you wanted to say as far as what you really liked? Um, talking about the cinematography, you know, I think it did a fine job. You know, like there have been George, better movies this year as far as cinematography, yeah. but it, they it, they did a. It's definitely a lot better than fucking Jane Got a Gun. You know, George O'Connor, whatever your name is. You know, you improved in this movie exponentially. However. Just Gavin O'Connor. Gavin O'Connor, okay. Gavin O'Connor, even though you improved a lot, you're still far from being, like, a great director because your editing, you know, you could look at this as a very unconventional kind of story, you know, how it's Absolutely. told and everything. But a lot of times, your film feels very disjointed scene to scene, especially near the beginning where you're jumping around character to character you know for a common audience member things can get pretty confusing and if they're not you know fully paying attention there are things that they can miss and I checked the reviews for this movie and it looks like a lot of people missed a ton of shit again like going back to what I said this is a thinking man's movie this is a yeah. movie where you have to really pay attention throughout yeah, and I don't know whether to blame you or just how your film was edited, but yeah, I can kind of see that. You could argue that, yeah, this is an unconventional kind of story, but you know, there are even moments that I was like, wow, that's kind of jarring, you know, just how it was edited and how it jumped 
between character to character and sometimes even totally forgot characters until 30 minutes later, you know? It's just, I can handle stuff like that pretty well. I can retain information as best as I can, but you can't expect that from a typical audience member. So when you're sitting at a fucking 50% on Rotten Tomatoes wondering why your movie, you know, isn't getting the critical praise that you wanted it to, maybe next time, maybe for the next action-packed movie you make, you improve upon that, and I promise you it's going to be amazing. I feel like if I had one complaint, it was there were a few pacing issues here and there. I feel like the movie would get really fast and then slam on the brakes and then... Yeah, when it slows down, I mean, you'll know it slows down. And for like 20 or 30 minutes, it's just... But even so, I was still interested in yeah, everything they still that managed, was going. Like, even if it was slow, they still managed to pack a good amount of story in. But, I mean, you'll feel it when it slows down, and you'll be like, okay, let's get a move on. Yeah. And it, just, it keeps going. It drags a little bit. Minor nitpick. That's The movie saves itself, though, with um, the final action sequence. Um, it's great. Like, it's fucking great. And, of course, the dialogue there at the end helps, too. Mm -hmm. oh, that's another thing I want to I give props to. The dialogue all throughout this movie. The, this, the, the script was wonderful. Mm -hmm. it, was, it was so well written. You know, every... It, it felt like every single word had a purpose. For the most part. I want to kind of continue off of that. I somewhat disagree... You know, I mean, for the most part, it's very well written, and I, I will praise the writing for that. But there are times where it kind of feels like the script contradicts itself. You know, J.K. Simmons' character, you know, is introduced, and you know, he's established that he has something against the accountant. But then, well, not maybe not necessarily against, but a vested interest in him. Yeah, but. Spoiler, spoiler. Okay, you can skip to this time, this time in the movie or this time in the video. To, you know, return back to the spoiler-free section. But I can't talk about this without spoiling shit. I think I know where you're going with this. Okay. So now that you didn't listen to me, um, pretty much J.K. Simmons' character, you know, he proposes, you know, this woman. To look into this accountant. Because he is a criminal. And you know he needs to be brought back. You know to prison. For being a criminal. For everything he's done. You know he's a murderer. He's done a lot of shit okay. Uh, later on in the movie though. You find out that like he's. Kind of working alongside with him. You know and. That's where the whole ultimatum is introduced. Um, for this new woman character. Because J.K. Simmons is retiring, or his character is retiring, and so she has to start working, you know, with the accountant. And they're kind of helping him stay out of prison. Well, and then, um... But there are times where the script really feels like, you know, J.K. Simmons has, like, a vendetta against him, and then later on in the movie, his character, you know, completely changes to where... Okay. He's trying to keep him out of prison. I get what you're sense. saying now. Yeah. Yeah. Do you agree with that? I would, yes. Okay. And that's just something that I felt like. I don't know if that was intended. Um, it felt like a mistake, though. And it felt like a really, 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 you know, difficult thing to notice. Um, I just somehow did. <laughs> like, that's, like, as nitpicking as I can get, though, with this movie. Because, I mean, everything else makes up for it. Absolutely. Um, it's definitely out there. Uh, anyways, welcome back. Welcome back. It is definitely one of those movies that's out there, but I recommend anyone see it. Because there's nothing really harsh about it to justify its R rating, other than, like, you know, a few F-bombs and, you know, you know, violence. Yeah. The kill shots never get especially brutal. I yeah. mean um, that's probably what gave it the the R rating is you know the 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 continuous gun violence and the mm -hmm. f bombs isn't it like 
one or two max allowed before it gets an R rating. You know, I don't really know the rules to that, but I didn't feel like this movie was trying to justify its R rating. It just happened to have an R rating. Like, it could have been PG-13, maybe edit out a few F-bombs, and, I mean, the movie would be intact. Um, you know, we live in a world where children can see faces getting ripped off and, you know, not be phased by it. What's a little bit of gun violence going to do to them, you know? And they probably talk worse when you're not around, parents. So just because, you know, the movie <laughs> says F-bomb, you know, fuck that. Like, <laughs> um, it is a very, very, very enjoyable movie and definitely one of the better ones of this month, I can say. Um, definitely better than Shin Godzilla, which completely surprises me, to be honest. Um... But if you're ready, I think we can rate this thing. I think I'm ready. All right, you first. I think I'd give it an 8. An 8 out of 10. 8 out of 10, I'm exactly with you. With an 8 out of 10, this movie is definitely worth the red box rental earns and worth you checking out in theaters. So with that being said, I am the Psychedelic Mystic, and this is my buddy Keegan, and we will catch you guys next time.